Hello there, welcome to Homemaking Without Fear. My name is Cassie and today I thought I would take advantage of the beautiful overcast weather and show you what's happening in the garden. I think about you all the time, morning, evening and midnight, such a wonderful delight. Everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm honest shared a video all about how to maximize space in a small garden. Now this year we are in a new home and we just put in a brand new garden space. It is small for what I'm used to. It may be large for some of you. I want to encourage you that if you're planning in small raised beds or containers, back patio gardening, that kind of thing, it is possible to grow healthy organic foods. It is mid July in zone six in Northwest Montana. Let's go ahead and see what we're getting from the garden. The thunder is rumbling and it's gonna storm any minute, but it's just really beautiful out here in the garden right now. Four foot by four foot vinyl raised beds I got from Costco. They're really a good price point and also very easy to put together. No tools required. In this first bed on the left when you walk in, I have shard, I have zucchini, I have some kale coming up, um, actually re almost ready to harvest, and a dragon tongue beans, and then a nasturtium in the corner. Um, I had radish planted here um, and it quickly bolted and went to seed with the hot 90 degree temperatures that we're finally getting. I'm not complaining about that, but it's really hard on greens, um, radishes, the sugar peas, things like that. It's just, they don't do as well in the hot weather. I have some cucumber that I started in my greenhouse. They're in a bucket and I plan to put those in the space of the radish and they can even grow up on the trellis here so that's actually a perfect spot for them to be. In this next bed I also have nasturtium. It's a great companion plant. I have some spinach that was just wonderful. We got two big harvests um, filled at least six one gallon bags full of spinach. I put some in the freezer. I cut it all down, bagged it up, let it grow again, cut it all down, and now I'm letting it go to seed. I'm gonna try to harvest some spinach seed for my next plantings. Then I will pull all the spinach out and I'll either put some cucumber in there or plant ground cherry in the greenhouse that I may put in place of the spinach and let it grow outside. I have sugar peas that are just coming on. Um, they have not bloomed yet, but they're all along this side of the trellis, and we look forward to having those. I have artichoke kind of down in the bottom underneath, and I'm not sure if they'll actually do anything. I just had some seed that was quite old, and I just wasn't sure if it would even germinate, and it did, so we'll see what we get. I have some cabbages here. As you can see in these four foot by four foot beds, with the square foot planting, you can fit quite a few things. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little 
Honestly, I overplanted a few of these beds this year. Um, I was using older seed, just trying to use up what I had, and I wasn't sure how well a lot of it would germinate since this garden is kind of an experiment, and everything did really well. I have lettuces that are are very closely planted and what I do is I just harvest the small leaves as leaf lettuce and let some of the larger heads of romaine continue to grow. Romanesco broccoli is doing quite well. It is gonna love the rain today. I have a three square feet area of carrots coming on really thick. I'll have to get those thinned out as well. There's some bush beans in the back here. Everything in these beds is looking really green and happy and just really beautiful. This last bed has beets. There's also some cauliflower, shallots growing underneath. Honestly, I shouldn't have put the shallots here. They are getting nice shade from the cauliflower, but they're kind of overwhelming the shallot, so I may have to move those. We'll see. I have basil that I seeded and it's coming up really nicely. My daughter had some bush green beans from school that she started in there, <laughs> kind of tucked in one of the square foot areas as well. Sugar Daddy snap peas here in the back of this bed, and they have not bloomed yet either, but that should be very soon. And we all love sugar peas, so we can't wait. I have some buckets of cucumber and also calendula and cat grass that my son started. I'll be pulling these cucumbers out and planting them in one of the four foot raised beds very soon. It's getting a little too hot in the greenhouse for this plant, it was, so I pulled it out. Side fence of the herb garden, we have pumpkins growing. Again, they're pretty over planted. I wasn't sure how the seed would come out, if it would germinate, and it did quite well. So I'm going to have to thin these out and decide what I'm gonna have to do. But I do have some more buckets, so that might be an option. I am trying a delicata squash this year, which is supposed to be really amazing. as a large fruit with tender flesh. Just a little flower in the corner. There's some hollyhocks and dill in the back. Okay, it's starting to rain, so let's go in the greenhouse. I've had a lot of fun with this tiny little greenhouse this year. I've never garden in a greenhouse ever. I've always wanted to, so it's been a learning curve for me. Uh, Montana is quite cool in the spring and the fall, so this should extend the growing season on either side of that, but I am learning that if summers really do get going, we can get 90 to 100 degrees, degree days, um, one right after the other. So that just, even with the vents open, this greenhouse doesn't have enough airflow um, to prevent it to get really, really hot in here. The plants I have in here right now are doing well with the heat, however, um, but I will be looking at possibly moving most of them outdoors now that the weather has stabilized. Let's take a look at what's in here, shall we? A bunch of peppers in here on each plant. They're just really doing really, really well. Very happy in here in the greenhouse. I have two tomatillo plants. I remembered kind of last minute that tomatillos need to have a buddy, at least two plants, so that they'll cross-pollinate and produce fruit. So I had to hurry up and find another tomatillo locally. I took a gamble and planted some Cave City watermelon seeds that I had saved from a watermelon we picked up. And they're coming up. Uh, they got a little overwatered this morning, so we'll have to fix that, maybe move it outside today. The tomatoes are doing well. I have been pruning them and making sure that I remove all the lower branches just so we get good airflow in here where it's nice and hot. Um, and they're doing well. Now, aggressive pruning will limit the amount of fruit that you get, but it will keep them from getting really bushy, out of control, and just make it easier to manage in a smaller space. So that's why I've done that. And we are starting to get some fruit set. Um, these are sun gold tomatoes, my very favorite, and I'm super excited about that. Again, I've underplanted with some basil. They help each other out, control pest pressure. Plants have kind of a funny curly look to them. I'm not really sure why that is. I don't know if it's a nitrogen 
um, too much nitrogen I'm not sure um, this is the Oregon spring it's like an early girl but I've never planted that before so we'll see how it goes the lemon and the lime trees are doing great I've got a jalapeno pepper two jalapeno I believe yeah two jalapeno plants here in the back and they have some fruit set burpless cucumber I need to pick this guy here you can see the tendrils growing up the string trellis I really like how that's working I have a little lemon cucumber I haven't trellised that guy but I probably will it's looking a little yellow and spotty and I think it's because it's growing um, close to the soil and so it's getting a lot of water splash and I think in general plants just are healthier when they're trellis and they get more airflow and they don't stay really saturated but there's lots and lots of blossoms so we expect lots of fruit off that one we did harvest one lemon cucumber and it was very good so I need to trellis this guy today I have a sugar baby watermelon I'm pretty sure that's what this is so it's an earlier maturing watermelon so we should be able to get a little bit out of that it's quite happy in the bucket but I will move it outside as well and then here are the ground cherries that I just kind of broadcast seeded into this bucket because it was old seed and I wasn't sure what was gonna happen but they're doing quite well in here too so I'll be moving them and giving them a new home in the raised bed once I pull out the spinach and I harvest the seeds overall this year I've just had a lot of fun in this little garden putting it together um, harvesting some, some early greens it really just brings me a lot of joy to garden and be outside it also teaches my children good lessons how to care for plants how to grow things how to grow your own food um, this is a my potager garden it's a kitchen garden for fresh eating I don't really expect to save preserve a lot of this um, I did freeze some spinach and some of the cabbage I'll be able to save maybe a few carrots will carry over into winter some beets but overall this is for fresh eating and for and it's right outside my kitchen so it's very convenient to come out and grab some things in the future I hope to plant a much larger garden so that we can be more self-sufficient and enjoy more homegrown produce that's what we're used to and I really look forward to that this little garden has provided us with a lot in a small space in a short amount of time I highly encourage any of you interested to just jump in and get started before I sign off I'll go ahead and show you the little herb plot off the side of the greenhouse I have chives in here I have parsley I have lemon balm I have oregano I have rosemary I have some amaranth, I have a whole line of calendula in the back. Um, there is echinacea beyond that. We have St. John's wort, we have winter thyme, we have sage, we have bee balm, I have a rhubarb start for my mom, um, spearmint. You're the rose in a garden. There's a lot of good stuff packed in this small area too. I love cooking with herbs and to be able to walk out the door and grab what I need, it's a really good feeling. If you are interested in getting your own small garden started, make sure you check out homemakingwithoutfear.com. I share all kinds of ideas of how to maximize small garden space. And I'm also there for you if you have any questions. Thanks for walking around with me on a beautiful, thundery, overcast day in Northwest Montana. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.